Hey, what's up, guys? This is Alex. And today I want to talk about one of the most angry and powerful Coral libraries I ever tried. And to test it, I wrote this, um, you know, Skyrim theme, theme from memory. So this is pretty much what it sounds like. So that was a little example of what Storm Choir 2 can sound like. This is just a short Skyrim um, main theme that I rewrote by ear and from memory. By the way, how did I do? Let me know in the comments below. And yeah, if you want to learn how to write Epic Choir, I'm not going to talk about that today in this video because this is a review, but uh, there is a video about that on this same channel called Epic Choir Basics. So search for it and watch it because in that video I explain how to write such epic and dramatic choir. And if you want to analyze this track, this Skyrim arrangement, I'm going to upload as usual the stems and the MIDI files of it on my Patreon page, which are going to be available for the people who um, help me on Patreon and donate to um, help this channel in staying alive. So if you're interested in that, go check out my Patreon page where you can download the stems for this track and every other single track that I uploaded on YouTube so you can analyze the music and uh, even try to mix it yourself because I also upload mixing stems now on Patreon. So if you're interested in that, go check out the Patreon page. But without further ado, let's get into the Storm Choir 2 review. So Storm Choir 2 is I think one of the angriest, most uh, powerful choral libraries that I tried. Now, this library goes a long way. Like it was released even before Lacrimosa and Metropolis Arc 1 were a thing, you know? So it goes back. It's quite like the granddad of those libraries. Now, this also means it has, like, it's pretty old and you, you feel it when you use it. That's actually the only downside I've found for this library, but I'm going to talk about that later. First, I want to tell you why I like, uh, I like Storm Quiet Shoe. So this library was developed from a company called Strats of Sampling. And they also, like, the thing I like about their library is, their libraries, is that they often satisfy a need which is not, uh, it is not being met. So when Storm Choir 2 was released, it was the only library, orchestral choral library, that allowed you to write such angry choirs, like stuff like this, you wouldn't find around. Now, it doesn't sound so impressive because I disabled the uh, mastering because it goes crazy. mastering jacket actually works live. All right. So this sounds quite angry and it's more noticeable towards the end, I think. It was very hard to find the libraries that sounded so, uh, so uh, big, especially in comparison to a full orchestration like this. That wasn't an easy feat. You had to process your libraries a lot and stuff like that. And then came stress of sampling with this beast of a library called Storm Choir, actually. <laughs> Very nice and fitting name for this thing. And uh, yeah, I remember hearing it in a few songs from a, friend, from a few friends of mine and thinking, whoa, what the hell did you do to your choir to make it sound so big? And they were like, yeah, I bought this library called Storm Choir, bro. And I was like, all right, I need to try this. So yeah, I finally put my hands on it and I have to say it has a pretty great sound. And as I said, um, it sounds huge out of the box. So it makes it easy for you to write a choir that stands out, stands out even in the midst of a full orchestration or a very, um, you know, 
uh, full arrangement. So this is very useful also for trending music. I'd say specifically for trending music, you know, that's a nice library to have. But uh, the thing is that nowadays there are alternatives. So, you know, you might have the alternatives, but if you don't have any or it's like Cora library and stuff like that, and you're looking for a powerful Cora library, Storm Choir 2 is actually a pretty nice candidate. And it's the granddad of those libraries. Now, uh, it comes, let's let's see, let's check out the libraries. It comes pretty much in two uh, types of choir. You have the men choir and the women choir, and you have three main articulations. Now, you might say that is a limited number, and it kind of is. Now, this library, the, the version I have here is called the core version, and there are expansions that might have uh, other articulation. I do not know. I did not check them out because I did not buy them. But uh, yeah, the core version has three articulations. You have the legatos, the staccatos, and the sustains. Now, the sustains are pretty much like a hybrid, in this case, hybrid between marcatos and sustains. And I'm going to show you all of them. So I did not have any legato going on in this track, and I do not have a keyboard here now with me to show you what they sound like, but they are very dynamic. So one thing I like about this library is that other than being super loud and angry, it can also be quite calm. So, you know, if you lower the mod wheel, you can manage the uh, intensity at which the guys are singing. So, um, yeah, if you go to the lowest amount, it gets quite quiet, actually, which is something that other candidates like Metropolis Arc 1 do not do. So, yeah, and, uh, this, tr this library is pretty versatile, actually, and loud. So <laughs> that's good points for it. And the legato is pretty great, actually. You can hear it in demos for, like, if you go on the Threads of Samplings website for, in uh, the Storm Choir 2 pages, there, there is a SoundCloud playlist where you can hear the demos and you can hear the legatos there, which is, are very bananas. Then you have the sustains and this is what they sound like. Now, again, this is, like, kind of poor arranging for me, like in this case, because it was just the most simple type of choir in this track. So I, there was the most simple choir part of this Skyrim theme. So I did not show how in-depth you can go with, with the Storm Choir 2. But yeah, the sustain pretty much is also determined, like the, the intensity is also determined by the mod wave. So if you tweak it, goes down and goes up to a you know, higher intensity level or, or calm uh, intensity levels. So you also have the freedom with the sustain. Sorry, my microphone is acting weirdly today. So if you hear strange noises, that's, that's the reason. I'm not sure why that happens. But yeah, what I meant, what I said before is that the sustain are a hybrid, a, a hybrid between sustain and marcatos because if you hear the short notes, they sound quite all right. And even the long notes. If I did this with another color library with a sustain patch, the short notes would sound strange because they wouldn't have the you know enough attack to sound so powerful, you know. And in the case of Storm Choir, instead, the attack is is quite great in the sustain patches as well. And the um, you know the DK and sustain is pretty great for the sustained notes instead. So it sounds great. Uh, on both short and long notes, the uh, same patch. So I think this is pretty much like you can treat it as a long marcato patch, which is very universal. And that's something I liked. Then there is the uh, staccatos, which um, is this. So the staccatos are very, very dry, very short and concise because they have a very nice attack and release. And that allows you even to trigger many of those in a su succession without having attack and release problems. If I did this in other libraries, I would have had problems with the timings of every note. But in here, you can spam it and it still sounds great. Yeah, but you you yeah, you, you need to change the syllable to make it sound great. But in terms of attack and release, it sounds pretty fast. And this is something 
I could never achieve with other libraries, actually. Neither, n- not, not even Metropolis Arc. Sometimes it gives you problems, but Storm Choir 2 is pretty great at this. So if you need super fast uh, staccatos, this is a nice library to use. Now, um, so yeah, it has this huge and massive sound that makes it stand out even in the most crowded mixes. And uh, the vibratos are, are pretty great, actually, I think. For example, I think we hear them a little bit here. I kind of like those, you know? So that's pretty much what I like. You know, the, the overall sound of Storm Choir 2 is nice and the library is quite simple and doesn't need you to, you know, switch between lots of articulations to sound okay. Although, oh yeah, you also have these multiple mic positions. And uh, yeah, now about the thing I did not like. So if you saw my choir tutorials, you know that one of the first things I have, like I I tell you guys to do is to have syllables going on and phrases. So for example, here. mm, Sorry, let me disable the isotoposon because it's making my computer lag too much. So yeah, this is actually the second downside of this library. The, um, the second downside, <laughs> which I'm telling before the first, is that it's pretty heavy on the CPU, I noticed, because there's lots of voices voices stacked into one single note, I noticed. So, yeah, it's quite CPU intensive. So, uh, yeah, what I wanted to say is, yeah, if you know me, you saw my quart tutorials before, you know that one thing I vouch for is to use syllables like this. So instead of having ha 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 you have da 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 something like that, right? You have those syllables that change as if a true choir were sing- was singing. Now, um, that's one of the first aspects to take, take care of, to write a choir that sounds convincing. And if the syllables have the same attack and release, that's bonus points because they do not always have same attack and release. And in this case, in this library, they do, thank God. Thanks, Trezov, actually, <laughs> because he's the guy who made this. And uh, all right, so there are two ways in um, Stormguard 2 in which you can trigger uh, different syllables. You can either use the phrase engine, which is pretty much a word builder plugin, which um, allows you to write a phrase using this. And what it does is that, is that it cycles through every time you press a note. Sorry, let me increase the dynamics. But, uh, so what I did in the beginning, like normally you get this patch and it, normally it's empty. So what I did in the beginning is I created random phrases by button meshing here. And I did that for every single patch so that whenever I pressed a note, it would, it would randomize, right? But it didn't sound so convincing, you know? And uh, that's one of the limits of the uh, this engine. It doesn't have a nice randomization function. Like, you, for example, in other libraries, you might have the same syllables, but a, a button that allows you to randomize between them. And maybe it allows you to uh, isolate some of the syllables so it never triggers them and it still cycles between the others. And, you know, that's a bit more believable for me. When I use, for example, Metropolis Arc, I use the randomizer and I find myself much better and it sounds much more convincing out of the box. While instead in here, I, I had to do this and it didn't sound so right for me. So I ended up using the key switching, which is the second method in which you can use syllables. You enable here key switching and you get key switches where you, like, if you press them, it changes the syllable that, that the notes trigger. Now, if you know me and you saw a bit of my tutorials before, you know I use this uh, plugin called BRSO Articulate, which, which allows you to link um, key switches of any kind to uh, MIDI channels. So whenever you change the MIDI channel or the color of a note in your piano roll, it triggers the key switch and the note at the same time. So in here, you see they're all colored and each to each color corresponds a different syllable. Sorry. Ah. (laughs) 
So yeah, they, th- that's why they're colored like it's a carnival or something. But yeah, that took quite a lot of time to make, you know, the, this um, Kiss Witch thing. And it actually might have been easier to do it in a normal way by using Kiss Witches in this case, because there are many layers of choir. So there needs to be said that maybe I was a bit dumb, but even with Kiss Witches, you know, using them the traditional way, that still takes me quite a lot of time compared to the modern libraries that we have nowadays that allow you to randomize in a very smart way without having to use key switches. Now, there needs to be said again that this library is very old. So that's why this engine is a bit rudimental in my opinion. And again, this is just my opinion, it might work nicely for you. But, you know, m- more recent libraries from Stormquire, like for example, Wotan or Freya, which are, you know, two other core libraries they made which again, they solve a problem. Like Wotan is probably the, the one, the, the main library that goes the lowest in commerce. And it's like, this have the, it has this warrior-ish sound while Freya is this ethereal, uh, almost angelic library. And those two are new and they have a different engine, I expect. So this problem here with the key switch is given by the fact that Stormquire 2 is pretty old. So it's not as if it's a faulty library, it's just old. So that's um, my, my my only true, uh, you know, only true negative aspect, in my opinion, for, for this library that makes it a bit tough for me to use it because the way I compose, I try to, I want to, I prefer things that sound great out of the box, you know, because I do not want to spend time finding the right key switches and building phrases and stuff like that. All those details I try to minimize to the, you know, the minimum extent, pretty much. So that's the only downside of the library. Although all the rest and the sound of it is freaking amazing. Now, I think, I'm not sure because I bought it a while ago, but I think the Storm Choir 2 core version comes to at the price of $320, I think. While the full bundle with all the expansion, expansions is like $480, something like that. You can check it out on the website or threads of sampling. If you Google it, you're going to find it. And uh, it's a pretty nice bargain, you know? Like, it's a bit expensive, but there's libraries out there which are way more expensive. But then again, they're more modern. So, um, yeah, it's up, it's up to you if you want to use it or not. Personally, I do like it, but um do not see myself using it a lot because of the word builder complication, which makes it more time consuming for me to write stuff using storm choir but you heard the sound it's pretty pretty great and it's greater when i use the mastering but just makes my computer explode yeah. uh yeah that was uh pretty much it i think i said everything i needed to say about this library and uh, if you're interested, go check out the demos on their website, which are made from composers where you better than me and for tracks which are more versatile than this part of the Skyrim team. So you get a more broad overview of this library. But I would recommend it to anyone who writes, you know, orchestral music with very full arrangements. So, for example, fantasy orchestral music is very, very broad. This library will shine in there because it cuts through all the crowded mixes and mix downs. And also to the guys who make trailer music and need a choir that sounds as powerful as their trailer sounds. And um, yeah, that's uh, those are the two types of people I would recommend this library to. And uh, if you have other questions about this library, let me know or actually ask the stress of guys over their website or Facebook page because I think they're quite available and quite nice people. Nice enough to answer to the questions of their customers for sure. So you can ask them. And uh, yeah, again, if you want to check out this track and analyze it, you want to access the, a bit of the project file, go check out my pet, like the link to the Patreon uh, post for this track because you're going to get all the stems and you can analyze it yourself. And uh, that was pretty much it. I hope you earned something of value out of this review. And to the stress of guys, sorry if I took so long to make the review. But yeah, I hope this was useful for everyone. 
with that uh, with that said <laughs> i'll see you later